tips i recommend following is always be interview ready think of the interviewer as your friend the company may not be your end goal why am i so passionate about this company only uh hey everyone welcome back to the channel so it seems like a long time after i'm saying this but yes here we are back with an amazing video uh so today we have a very special guest with us on our channel kunal kushwaha uh kunal thanks a lot for joining uh it's a pleasure for me to be having you here on the channel today and uh, you know if you don't mind would you like to give our viewers a quick something about yourself yeah thanks for having me and uh, i'm i'm kunal i um uh, i'm a final year student as of uh, june 2022 I've been contributing to open source uh, since my freshman year. I'm active in communities, I do content creation and stuff. And uh, I work at uh, Sivo right now as a developer advocate. And uh, I'm a CNCF ambassador, I'm active with MLH uh, as an MLH coach. I'm previously in the fellowship program. And uh, yeah, I've been, been involved with open source and such initiatives. You know, the Google Summer of Code, LFX, CNCF students. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to have to. you know talk about uh, all the things related to career and stuff hopefully you would uh, you know find it beneficial i'm sure i'm sure about that um thank you so in this video kunal will help us decode placements the correct way or the right way um kunal so my first question to at this point uh, according to you what do you think is the correct approach towards decoding placements that all types of students can follow so probably like a generic approach that Uh, you know you think to all types of students can follow at this point so you know, this is a good question and uh, since you mentioned all types of student i do not ever recommend thinking about the placement season as it is because then the stress and worry would pile up because you'll be like oh placement season is coming up never care about placement season placement season is real uh, although that's definitely true big tech companies like google and stuff they start hiring at a particular month and if you are applying on campus obviously companies would come at a particular month depending on college to college so obviously the timeline is there but when you talk about like off campus placements as such um, i'm only guiding for like college students who don't get on campus opportunities if you're getting great on campus opportunities then you should probably you know, take guidance from your uh, like seniors or placement coordinators or whatever uh, that's a good advantage that you have so make use of it um but speaking of off campus and people who don't get college opportunities um so in the big tech companies obviously they hire at a particular point of time for students but when you apply off campus to other companies so there are plenty that do not have like a fixed timeline that okay we will only hire this month and we will only run an entirely special process so why this works for both the people who are looking for like on campus or big tech companies or other companies is the approach i recommend following is always be interview ready so it's not like when the placement season is coming near then only you will re revise all the nice concepts all the important questions and um uh, this is something i would recommend always be interview ready it should be like if you have your interview so obviously when someone schedules an interview they will give you some like it, it it's not like they will say tomorrow in some cases maybe but sometimes it will be like a week or something if it's not you can like also ask them like reschedule because if good good tech companies will ask you when are you free bad tech companies will just call you on whatsapp uh <laughs> without any hints so i don't recommend such companies try to be professional um so yeah that's a good sign and also for placements internships the companies also will ask you what they can help you with because it may not be that the company may not be your end goal so that's why the company also knows this obviously they'll get something out of it but they have to support you in your growth as well especially if you are a new grad um so always be interview ready and uh, this is why i recommend do dsa a little bit every day um in the morning i used to do dsa 2 3 hours because not every company would ask for it but some companies ask for it like you know big fang type companies they ask dsa rounds there are online coding rounds that ask dsa so please make sure you practice dsa every day and also practice then uh, give some other time to your other skills so that you can apply for roles that are non dsa related as well like in various startups remote work by open source or whatever now you have your like you have best of both worlds and then you can just apply everywhere this thing that a lot of people because i have a lot of um like peers with me who um, you know since the starting they have had one 
company as their goal and throughout these two to three years they have been just aiming for that one company they have been prepping up like for that and um i just think that approach might help to achieve that one particular goal that is right but do you think that is something that a lot of students should also follow as a long term approach i think you can do whatever you want it is a free world if you want to get into a company uh, you can you can go for it whatever you want to do in life you want to go to like google or amazon or microsoft or even some startups or you want to do your own startup um uh, you want to drop engineering and do something else play cricket i think whatever you want to do you know you can go for it having one particular company in mind an aspiration that's okay nothing wrong with that but you have to understand you sh- you should all- definitely ask ask yourself the question why 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 am i so passionate about this company only if you're able to answer that go for it but if you're not then i don't think it's worth you know uh, leaving everything else and uh, so when you come many folks are like you know i want to get into like uh, fang companies i get so many messages i want to get into fang in like uh, bangalore or whatever i'm like that is amazing because uh, i've talked to many fang people and it has been great in their career like they first start out at like uh like uh, you know google and then they move on they move on move on till they find their you know whatever they like so that's totally great and you should definitely go for it but then i ask them why and for that they don't have very good answer they like well, the salary is nice i'm like salary is nice in like startups also in india startups pay very well uh, you get so much exposure you get exposure in uh, other companies also and not just startups other big tech companies also uh not just fang outside fang if you yeah. if you're a Bo- uber for example right uh in india itself not only outside india so you have to think about why this company only uh so when you talk about like i want to get into fang why fang you get uh, better pay in other companies also and it's fang is great but you have to think about it right like, why this company so if you have this particular goal in mind like i want to work on this company is this product i've been passionate about it or whatever fine you it's nice to have dreams and goals but try to be a little bit like realistic and think outside the box so because if you think outside the box then your opportunities will expand the reason people say there are not many opportunities in tech many students is because they are not looking outside the fang world there's so many opportunities in tech if you just look outside the fang world um so fang or no fang it's totally up to you both are both are great um but uh, and when we when i talk about great and what you, what they have to offer it also depends on person to person so see what the company is offering and if you're happy with it and what other companies are offering in compared to it um in the end what matters is your happiness and work life balance and you should be happy with the role you're doing now i'm sure this question has been asked to you several times but in order to sum up on what we are discussing today say that you know what should be the course of action for students to actually get a good hands on dso programming i think just give the interviews even if you fail just just go for it I also failed some DSA interviews when I gave in my end of my first year and from those mistakes I learned like where I was lacking I was lacking in like speed or this concept was not clear and things like that give mock interviews as what I would highly recommend um but if you're being if you're afraid of like giving interviews applying to opportunities I don't think you should do that you will miss out on so many things um if you if you if you end up getting rejected that's that's okay because then you will learn and you will do better next time but if you directly jump onto the opportunity that you want without any prior interview experience then there are high chances that you would make the mistakes that you did not caught that you, that you did not catch um because um, because you were not able to give interviews in the previous companies so give interviews and fail at those and then learn from that just now because we are on this topic um i have seen a lot of people who are also caught out due to their interview anxiety they have the good practice they know how to approach a particular question right and uh, with, with the pressure of solving all these questions correctly just overpowers them and makes them all anxious during the interview so i've heard such incidents from my friends right that they know the correct approach they might have even solved a particular question uh when while they were practicing but when the same question appears in front of them during the interview they get all caught up in answering it the perfect way or uh, you know just just they get caught up on that so so what's your take on this have you had any experience with this kind of anxiety i think i i, I don't have anxiety uh i never get sad i'm always happy um uh, and the reason being is that 
you I, I personally believe you give your best and whatever happens would happen a way to you know a way a way that i approach interview problems there are two points the point number one is think of the interviewer as your friend and as your coworker think of it like imagine because interviewers want you to succeed if they did did not want you to succeed they would not be taking your interview and when you think of them as your coworker then you're actually communicating with them getting the right answer at the interview is not that important is not as important as communication so they are actually looking at your thinking process so when you're given a question like dsa question you first mention the brute force approach clarify the question ask for extra information if necessary then talk about time complexity then talk about how you can optimize it whatever you're thinking keep saying it if there's a seconds gap where no one is saying anything that is a red flag so always keep on saying stuff and um, the interviewer will definitely help you also uh, if you get stuck and that is not a bad thing um, you some people think that, oh interview help me it means that my interview did not go well that's not true uh, it's a communication it's a two way thing so you're not the only one um, but uh, that's one of the things that i would recommend and the second point is uh i actually do not care about what the output would be getting accepted or rejected i it, i give the interviews like uh it does not really matter uh and that way when you don't have any expectations you end up giving better uh, better results uh for interviews so those are the two points i'd like to mention um we were also discussing about right learning from interviews so when whenever you give interviews so you said that whenever you're practicing or you, you if you want to get proficient in dsa stay consistent in giving interviews right so um after you've given an interview how to learn the most out of it um, even if you get rejected or accepted um, one thing is definitely getting constructive feedback from the interview but what are some of the other things in which any student can make the most out of after giving an interview yeah you can ask for feedback and if they provide feedback then the question is answered you work on the feedback but many big tech companies don't give feedback so like google if you get rejected in google they will not give you feedback like why why you were rejected um so i think it's their like policy or whatever i'm not sure but you will not get uh, like feedback on to improve what you can do is reflect upon it yourself uh, what question was asked google about it uh, search about the question answers the approach you followed learn from other people's experiences so if the company is not giving feedback then you can reach out to like someone you know who's at, who's working there share your interview experience and they can point out the mistakes um some, some sometimes you may lack lack skills as well so obviously upskilling part communication skills matter quite a lot um uh, that's i think that's it yeah Dep- highly dependent on like, the role and the interviews but uh, uh, if you're not getting feedback reach out to some folks who know who you know and um explain it to them and uh, learn about other uh, learn from their experiences so what i would recommend yeah i know constructive social media can get us a good number of opportunities and i've seen a lot of tweets as well from your side about learning in public and um, you know about the same thing but what do you think and how students can optimize their personal brand on these social platforms in order to connect with more such opportunities yeah i mean a personal brand definitely helps but it's not like mandatory but but it's it's definitely great and i'll highly recommend it like github and linkedin and and twitter and stuff um um you can share about the work you do your learnings um these are social networking platforms so obviously it means networking connecting with people so connect with engineers and other people you you know you, you find in the community learn from their experience um get involved in the content that they are sharing learn from it try to provide value like if someone is asking a question about web development and you work to work in web development then you can answer that question and publicly who will, whoever will see that will know like okay this person works in web dev or stack overflow you can answer questions over there or github on to open source just it's all like like a like a social portfolio sort of thing um twitter like when you when you share about such thing it's not like a concrete proof that this person you know definitely knows what they're talking about but when you get involved in the community and and you work with the community members in that way then they all they obviously sense okay this person knows what they're talking about i've worked with them 
in this project or open source or in this podcast they raised some great issues some great points blog post was nice things like that um i think i think hard work in the end is uh, definitely you know the most important part but uh, and doing great work is you know still very important but the learning in public thing is a nice way to get to places where you can do great work um uh, it's not the only thing um if you are really good at what you do you don't need learning in public you can just you know you you you're already there with the networks and connections and you're already collaborating with people globally you will not have any difficulty finding jobs most students are not like this most students are learning phase and just beginners and stuff which is okay um but you don't have to be an expert as a student but you have to have the will to like learn and explore so there are many types of students some are like very good at what they do contribute to big scale open source projects their career is already set they get offers day and night then other students who are just starting out and who are just learning 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 making some projects and stuff that's also fine uh, no one expects you to be an expert but people expect you to have an open mind so just connect with people learn from their experiences apply uh, apply with referrals so this is it for the first part of this video but we are coming out with the next part very soon so make sure you check out the links in the description box below and uh, go and follow kunal if you haven't till now and yeah we'll meet soon bye everyone thank you for watching